There can be no shared prosperity while 11 million aspiring Americans have no rights. There can be no shared prosperity while 20 million people look for work and can't find it. There can be no shared prosperity while politicians terrify our parents and grandparents with threats to cut Social Security and Medicare benefits, the economic security that they've earned. There can be no shared prosperity while millions of young men disproportionately African-American labor in prisons instead of in school or at work. There can be no shared prosperity while mayors and governors of both party close schools and libraries in our poorest communities. Shared prosperity means building a country that can compete in the 21st century and lift up nations and people around the world. I'm Laura Flanders, and here on the Grit TV stage at the AFL-CIO Convention 2013 in Los Angeles, I am very proud to welcome Lee Saunders. He is president of AFSCME, which is the federal, state, county, and municipal employees union. He's been one of those speaking from the stage about the resolutions that are being passed here at this uh, convention. One of those resolutions in particular, one of many firsts, had to do with incarceration. Lee, welcome to the program. Um, talk about that resolution that passed opposing mass incarceration and the significance of it uh, to your union. Well, at, uh, first of all, uh, we support uh, the uh, resolution 100%. Uh, we believe that in this country, we should be looking at alternatives. I mean, if you look at mass incarceration, a high number of those incarcerated are minority youth. Uh, they are people of color. And we believe that uh, we've got to have alternatives and we've got to provide quality jobs. We've got to have a quality education system. That's where you should be spending your resources. That's where you should be spending your money. And that's what we're, why we're supporting it. But your members, I was going to say your members. We represent the correction officers within our union. And one of the things that we wanted stressed in that, uh, in that resolution was that uh, our correction officers are doing a great job. And they work in, under very, very difficult circumstances. And right now, with the state budget cuts, with uh, money, with the resources being short in state and local governments across the country, you've got problems with staffing levels. You've also got a move by the private sector uh, to privatize correctional facilities. Uh, that makes no sense to us at all, uh, because when you privatize and you in, and you entertain having companies come in to make money, then their ambition then, it seems to me, would to be to keep people incarcerated rather than for looking at alternatives. So you're finding a shared interest between the people facing incarceration, the communities and families they're coming from, and your workers. You make it sound easy, but this has not been simple, I suspect. No, it hasn't, it hasn't been simple, but uh, the communities are coming together. We're forming coalitions, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, with family members, with other uh, with other organizations to oppose, oppose the privatization of prisons because there's a, there's a direct conflict of interest. So we're trying to work together with our communities, listening to their concerns, but they're listening to ours also. What kind of gr community groups have you been working with? Well, we're, we're working with, uh, with families who have uh, incarcerated uh, uh, children or husbands or wives. We're working with them. Uh, we're working with uh, uh, legal groups uh, who oppose the privatization of prisons. We really think it's unconstitutional. That, that is an inherently res uh, inherent responsibility of government because you don't want to put the profit motive into the privatization of prisons. So we're working with any group that uh, which shares our, our values on that. I was very struck that it was at that line of President Trump's speech on Sunday, uh, rather on Monday morning, that the entire convention hall pretty much stood on his line where he said shared prosperity cannot mean millions of young men disproportionately African-Americans in jail. Uh, were you struck by the amount of support for this resolution at this convention? No, I, I think that it's uh, natural for us to believe uh, uh, in a resolution such as this. I think that uh, what we support and what we aggressively push for is quality education, quality public education in this country. We aggressively push for quality jobs in this, in, in this country, training individuals so they can move from 
uh, working poor to the middle class. That's what the labor movement is all about. And that's why the support for that resolution is not surprising at all. All right, one more resolution I'd love you to address, and that is the one on shared prosperity. What will that actually mean, shared prosperity? Of course, we're all for it. But, but what does that mean to have that resolution passed at this convention? Well, you have a, a country right now where the top 1% are gaining all the power and the wealth at the expense of the 99% of Americans who are try, trying to play by the rules every single day, uh, that are working hard. Uh, trying to make ends meet, putting food on the table, trying to send their kids to school, but the playing field is not level. It's not level. And we've got to level the playing field. We've got to, we've got to develop programs and have programs and push for programs which support working families, not supporting banks and corporations, but supporting working families to give them a fair shot at achieving the American dream. And right now, that's not happening. And that's why we're opposed to uh, these massive tax cuts uh, for corporations. Uh, we're opposed to uh, the austerity measures that uh, a lot of the Republicans in Washington, D.C. Are, are pushing. We're opposed to governors who are attacking collective bargaining, attacking workers' rights, attacking civil rights, attacking voting rights all across this country. That's taking power and strength away from working families who, who, are, who are trying to play by the rules, and we're going to continue to fight that. Put a little bit more flesh on the bones. What will happen to your members, some of them at least, if the Congress, when they're continuing their con when they consider their continuing resolution uh, on the budget uh, accept yet more austerity or more sequester what does it mean to the people that you well we've are, we're already uh, hurting I mean if, if you look at the statistics in the public service across this country uh, government jobs have been have been declining 750,000 jobs have been lost over the past couple of years uh, more layoffs will occur with the federal money being frozen with states suffer suffering across this country and not getting the kind of uh, resources that they need to provide essential public services. So uh, again, these austerity measures have, are not working. They have never worked. We've got to have a growth agenda. We've got to tax those corporations. We've got to tax that top 1%. They've got to pay their fair share. It shouldn't be the responsibility of the 99% who are trying to play by the rules to move this country forward. I remember talking with Lee Henley of the uh, transportation workers, and he said, you know, when we are the bus drivers and we're charging more for less service, we are, as it were, the community tax collectors in the community, and we're kind of seen that way. How do, you know, we get the grief, reasonably, because that's who people see. Um, how do you build common interest and try to head off the divide and conquer tactics of the media that would whip up one group against another? Well, that's why this convention is so important and the activities of this convention and the resolutions that we're passing. Uh, the labor movement can't do it alone. Uh, our density is down. We represent 11% of the workforce, 6% uh, in the private sector, about 35% in the public sector. Uh, but we need a healthy private sector to continue uh, to move this labor movement forward. Uh, we've got to develop alliances and coalitions with our partners outside of labor, uh, within our own communities, working with civil rights groups, religious organizations, students, retirees, women's organizations, people who think like us, who care about jobs, who care about quality jobs, who care about their communities. And we've got, to, we've got to develop relationships, not only at the national level in Washington, D.C., but at the grassroots level, at state and local governments. We've got to develop those relationships, develop an action plan, and then move that plan forward. And for those who haven't got onto it, cottoned onto it yet, what does being a member of a union mean to a public employee, to a state, county, federal municipal employee? It means employee? protections. It means quality wages. It means quality benefits. It means having a voice on the job. Lee Saunders, thanks so much, so, so much for joining us from Aftersmith. Great to have you.